So what do you think can um, the visual appearance add to a musical performance? Everything. I, a absolutely everything. Seriously, because for somebody who's been playing music my whole life, there's everything that goes on in your house or in a recording studio and what could possibly be the point of getting up on stage in front of other people and taking their time and commanding their attention unless you're prepared to give them something different than what they can get out of their CD player. So I think they deserve it. I'll put in five extra minutes of makeup time. I have no problem with it. Is that a bit of a ritual as well, of getting into character? Absolutely. Well, that's the thing, is that we're actually in character most of the time anyway. It's just invisible, so that we have our invisibility shields on when we go out, because we get stared at enough anyway. So this just adds a whole other level of getting stared at. But that's all right. We like it. Um, yeah, a huge ritual, like putting the heart on my cheek is a many years ritual for me. I just feel uncomfortable leaving the house without it. It's a protective thing. And I think that we all have things that we go through together <laughs> that are um, not only fun for us, but that <laughs> lend to the atmosphere and things that we really would feel completely uncomfortable without. It's the, it's the me time, the us time. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, the style itself seems uh, slightly inspired inspired mm. word, inspired by by um, Japanese visual K and and gothic Lolita and this thing are you influenced by that or is that just actually no but there's a good reason for that um, I admire both extremely and I like the music and I love the fashion and I I completely adore it however there's actually no crossover whatsoever but when you realize that what are those bands or that scene inspired by They're inspired by essentially the same things that we are, which is Baroque and Victorian clothing, history, tea times, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just that we're all drawing from the same resource. And I think it's charming that we all end up being able to be part of the same team, really. But that's the fun of when I was learning about all of the, the Gothic Lolita and all of those things, which I really, really love, is that I felt close to it because they were completely in love with the same things that I was. We were all looking at the same um, magazines from the 1840s and thinking, I want to wear that. And the only thing is you just make it a lot shorter than it originally was. The rest of it, you keep the same. And that's that's pretty much it. Where do you think does this uh, fascination for the Victorian age come from? I mean, it's rather new, isn't it, that people look mm. that far back in a retro trend? <laughs> well, for me, it's actually recent because I'm a huge history nerd and I just that's what I enjoy is time traveling back and learning about where things came from because it's fascinating it tells me about myself and the world around me and also where things are going to go in the future which is pretty important and so I was originally much more obsessed with earlier and earlier times and as I grow older and the music changes and changes it, it seems to be getting later where now we're at the Victorian era, not only, but it's heavily inspired because that was the Industrial Revolution. That's where the whole planet changed, and that's where we all of a sudden have running water and electricity and cameras, which, of course, what do we do when we get a camera? We shoot pornography on it. I mean, it tells you so much about what people were doing and how actually similar everybody is because wouldn't we do the same thing now i mean isn't that the first thing that comes to mind oh i have something i can document something with let's get nasty so but it's true though i mean that tells you more than looking at a bunch of pieces of paper that people wrote is what they were fascinated by what was intriguing to them what was beautiful to them and also what was terribly ugly and a lot of what i'm mainly inspired by with that era the last 200 years of Western history in particular is that it was actually pretty horrible and I don't glamorize it at all and that's why we don't live in castles we live in an insane asylum that's crawling with rats and plagues and you know mad doctors that do experiments on our uteruses I mean that's what happened that's reality this isn't a, a complete fabrication there's nothing that we're playing at that um, or that we bring up in shows or records or whatever that didn't happen to the girls 
slightly over or less than 100 years ago. So it's really in that way, um, being able to sympathize with and relate to our immediate ancestors, and mine in particular were those girls that I come from a long line of um, fabulously mentally ill, lovely ladies that that lived in these places and sometimes lived to tell about it. And it's a very important thing to keep being a part of it. I mean, one of these motives from the Victorian age and, and a lot of ages in art um, has been the combination of femininity and death. Exactly. And that's also something you work with a lot. And well, that's... Mm. Uh, uh, figures like Ophelia and all that. That's What's the whole thing. That? Well, that was because um, also the the history literary nerd in me who's completely obsessed with everything Shakespeare ever wrote from just years ago and being intrigued by all of that and just loving it, I got to know pretty well the Ophelia character and realized that I wasn't the only one and that through the last several hundred years, people have been more than inspired by this one particular girl who ended up being the archetypal character for girls on Zoloft, for the manic depressed, for the bipolar, for the people on whatever, and for anyone who's ever thought about jumping off a bridge is that. She is the one who inspired dozens of pre-Raphaelite painters to make images of her and you think, and that's what it isn't that I think that's so fantastic. I think it's fucked up and I think it's hilarious that we're all glamorizing this image of this girl who killed herself and in a very particular way and in a very intentional way and spurred on by certain life difficulties or not. It's a huge mystery. Was it intentional? Did she mean to do it? Did somebody push her? Nobody really knows. Was she just crazy all along? Was she faking it? Nobody knows. And that's the thing is I choose to believe a bit of all of it, but everybody has been so fascinated by that that they've just completely glamorized this image of something that is the absolute anti-glamour. And that's why I think this is all hilarious. This is all so funny that that is what so much of our society even now and then has been built on is these images of things that people found beautiful that were in fact so incredibly messed up and um it's really just for me personally i would do everything that i do even if it were just me in my bedroom and i did and i still will and those are the things that make me laugh and make me write songs is just how fucking ridiculous is all of this this whole life is ridiculous this all, all of the things that we're inspired by are ridiculous. The things that we think are healthy have their roots in something that's really, really sick. And just realizing it makes it kind of okay in a way, like at least we can talk about this. And that's where you combine it all onto a record that's ridiculous, completely sarcastic and not taking itself seriously and yet is actually about suicide in every song. And in that way, I'm no better than every pre-Raphaelite that painted a pretty picture about a girl killing herself. And so they'll still do it because she's still as fascinating. And it also tells you what people find fascinating is not something nice and pretty. It's somebody drowning. So what does that say about all of us? But it is, I have to admit it. Well, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Give me another half hour. And all. <laughs> You're like, why do why have I lost my voice? Hmm. I have no idea. Hmm. God hates pretty chicks. That's what we <laughs> discovered. Everybody has gotten pretty horribly ill on this last tour. And we're, we're basically on our last legs at this point. So just laying in bed together the other night, we were thinking, why? Why, God, why? We're trying so hard. We've done everything we could possibly do. We've tried to make this so pretty. So God and God hates yeah, hot chicks. God hates hot chicks. What are you going to do? Thanks, God. I mean, what's, what the church has been telling us for. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> See, you totally understand. That's the thing. You could come cry in our bed yeah. with us. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> we'll always make room for more hot chicks. But, and you too, you're kind of cute. <laughs> yeah. I think you like seeing that. Nice. But speaking of hot chicks and the outfits and everything, I mean, yeah. I've seen you on the internet uh, showing how to... Who has? I've, I've seen you on the internet. How to put on a corset and, and the stockings in the right way and everything. And, um, it's a very particular way. You must do it. Yeah, I'm sure about it, yeah.